Welcome everyone to the E9X channel. As you can see here, I have a N55 engine block. Now to give you guys some context, this is my old engine from my uh, E92. This thing spun a rod last summer and since I wanted to drive this car and it was kind of urgent, I just simply swapped the motors out and to be honest, I just took it out and I have not touched it ever since last summer. So my, my goal is to tear it down and to rebuild it and then we'll just see what we do with it. First thing I want to do is to spin uh, this engine to see if crank is damaged at all or bent. First order of business is to remove your spark plugs just to help you spin the engine so that you don't have any compression. Now, what I recommend you guys, as soon as you get a turbo BMW engine, get one of these Finimal 12, uh, 12 point sockets because you don't want to start working on the engine and then realize you can't take out your spark plugs because these are special spark plugs. They're having Hey, it's Xavier from the future. Um, if you're wondering why there's only five spark plugs, I just needed one to figure out a misfire on my car. So other than that, they look they look all fine. So let's keep going. Let's see if this engine spins at all. Ooh. Okay. Our engine spins. Woo! All right, so now we're just gonna reinstall this would be great if you're planning on removing the crankshaft uh, you have to remove the upper oil pan right here if you want to keep your engine on the engine stand you cannot bolt it underneath here because you need to remove this you can watch me try to put this thing back on Okay. Okay. First thing you want to do is remove all the uh, accessory pulleys. Here. One thing I do recommend is to uh, lock your tensioner in the well, locked position. That way you can reinstall your belts and you won't have any issues. Basically it just slots in right here. So. There you go. That's your tensioner locked. You can take your T55 to uh, unbolt these three bolts. You don't really need to unbolt that one. Okay, then what you wanna do is remove your 11 millimeters. Don't forget to remove this uh, vacuum line that goes from your vacuum pump. Uh, little trick I use is I use these 90 degree pliers so I can just squish the two clips and then I can just pull it out. And with that done, I can move this around so that I can move this final bolt. I'm pretty sure this is not the right bolts. They're all supposed to be 11 millimeter nuts and bolts. This one was simply there, a knee Torx. There you go. Can move the intake manifold. And if you can, you can just squeeze this little line in and then you got your hole and take manifold out. And then last thing before we open anything in this engine, I really wanna, I did drain the oil before I put this engine uh, on the engine stand, but I still don't know if there's anything left in it. So we're just gonna drain it just to make sure. As you can see, a bit of oil is still left. Curious to see if I, I left a filter in it or not. Ooh, God. Okay. God, I already see shavings in it. Okay, so next, uh, the plan would be to remove the oil pan. That way, we can have access to the oil pump sprocket or the oil pump bolts. Then we can undo all the timing. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do oil pan and then I'm gonna do valve cover and then we'll have access to all the important timing and whatnot. Slowly. Very, very, very important. When you're dealing with these aluminum bolts on these N-series engines, always, always undo it by hand first. Never use an impact. Uh, I'll show you later, but that's why there's a 
snapped bolt. This was not me. It was already like that before when I when I got the car. All right, now we just have to zap them off uh, with the gun. All right, here goes nothing. Oh God, I can see shavings at the bottom. All right, well, we're gonna keep this gasket just in case. Now as you can see, oh, okay, there's a bit of oil here. This engine has quite some sludge. Well, it doesn't have much sludge, but you can see that like it's, it's dark in some areas. That's, that's the bulb we're gonna need to take out from this oil pump. Although you don't really need to take the baffle yet. Uh, we can still take it out if we want. Again, aluminum bolts. So first with a wrench. Uh, these are all E10s. All right, and then you can just wiggle it out. It's held in by an O-ring right here. Tell me real quick if you can see the imposture between all these connecting rods. Does that one look a little dark for you guys? Yeah, and that is why my engine failed. I just spun a rod on uh, cylinder number four. Let's see if we got any wiggle. I'm not supposed to be able to do that. Now I'm hoping this crank is savable. If not, then uh, we're gonna have to find a solution. Pump that out. But whether it's savable or not, I still need to uh, take this crankshaft out. I'm just gonna put temporarily four little bolts. <sighs> God, this engine is so top heavy. So what I did is uh, essentially there's still quite a bit of oil left in the engine, which is normal. Um, so what I did is I put like four aluminum bolts just temporarily there just for the meantime. And then once I'm ready to undo all the timing, I'll just remove those four bolts and take off the oil pan. Let's just lay this little blanket right here. All right. Now we're gonna take off the valve cover. So first you need to remove the fuel rails right here. So for that, you need a 14 millimeter wrench. There should not be any fuel pressure in my case, cause this engine has been off for like over a year. So all these lines are off. So I don't know if you can see it, but uh, on the other side of the valve cover right here, there's this, I don't know what it is. It's like a little weight or something. Probably to balance the car out. I'm not too sure, but it's a T25 screw. This should come off. All right. I mean, it's not the cleanest engine. Like my junkyard engine was cleaner than this. None of the cam lobes are scratched. Okay, so here's the plan. Here's um, the idea. Since I don't have any of the tools that can lock the cams or whatever in place, while the tensioner is still in, I'm going to loosen every single major bolt from the timing system. So cam gears, the vacuum pump, uh, bolt the oil pump bolt and this big big old bolt once all of that is done I'll, I'll be able to loosen the tensioner and then we'll be able to keep going on the underside Woo! so there's our vacuum pump bolt all right that's loosened Next are the two camshaft bolts. Final bolt is this one. Guys, you have no idea how much force it took. So now, uh, all that you have left is this um, tensioner, uh, since all the moving parts are now loose. Okay. Oh, okay, it wasn't that tight. Now your chain is all loose. The reason why we loosened all of these bolts down here is that there's a secondary timing chain guide here for the vacuum pump, oil pump, and the crankshaft. And essentially, you have to remove that to be able to remove your... Uh, Crankshaft. Okay, so before removing uh, anything from the oil pump, I'm just gonna remove these two plugs because I'm pretty sure these hold the lower system. Let's remove the crank hubs. It's gonna be a massive bolt. 
Okay, there's a sprocket on it. So very important, this little ring, like washer, I think that's a locking ring. Very important to have as this serves as one of the friction plates. This is your crank hub and this basically just essentially goes through one set here that goes in the upper timing. And then I assume a second ring at the bottom that goes in the lower timing system. There's a third one in the back, you can't see. And essentially, the sprocket, which you can do, slide it off once the oil pump is off. Pretty sure there's only this bolt right here left. Uh, I know this is not the correct way, but I have none of my e-torx bolts that can fit there, so. So I have a 12 point uh, ratchet wrench. Is It's kind of the best that I can do. What I assume is that you would need one of these e-torxes, but in like a very thin and skinny way, but like I have no clue how BMW wants you to fit an e-torx in that small hole. All right. There you go, we did it. Yeah, so it's a E10 bolt but I can't fit it in the hole. So yeah, now that the timing system is all undone, we can proceed to flipping the engine. There you go. First, before removing the bed plate, let's try to remove this seal. This oil drain pipe for the turbo needs to come out. So essentially, there's two bolts right here that are like sitting up higher. You can, well, you can't really see it, but from my point of view, I can see that they're sitting higher. And you have to undo these two first. And then once that's done, you can do all of the other bolts around the bed plate. And once those are done, we can then do these bolts here in the middle, which uh, have an order to them, which is basically from inside to outside. And then there are four bolts where uh, the crank seals are at. Uh, those are E12. Great, now that all of the bolts have been taken out, I can try to pry this out. There she is, boys. There she is. Okay, all the crank journals are mint. That's extremely good news. Now, uh, what we need to do is undo all the bolts from the rods. Take these out very carefully. I don't really care. It's not good. It's really not good. I know you gotta pull up as like, straight as you can, but I got these bolts right here. Blocking me. Okay, this is really risky, but I have to do it. I have my jack holding another point in the engine in the front. See, I just wanna make it loose so I can move the arm. No issues, oh my God. We did it, woo! Okay, now let's quickly put back the bolts into the engine. I was probably hoping you could take out the rods and the piston from underneath and like put it back in, but I don't think so. I think I'm gonna have to take the head off. I really, really don't want to take the head off, but I don't think I'll have much of a choice. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I'm really glad I was able to film all of this with you guys. Um, I, I really love making these videos. I'm like, I'm discovering stuff at the same time as you. Like I never, I never, uh, built on engines. Subscribe, like, and um, we'll see each other next time when uh, this engine is going to be ready to be built. But wait, before you leave, there is more. So right after this video, I went to the machine shop, I dropped off my crank, and I said, check it out, whatever. Unfortunately, due to the spun rod, the crank developed micro fractures and micro cracks in it. And as soon as there's micro cracks, it's just not safe or smart to reuse it as you risk 
destroying your crankshaft. If it was forged, they could have like uh, welded it and like like refinish it or whatever, but since uh, the early N55s used a cast crankshaft, uh, there's no other option than to just use another crankshaft. A new crankshaft for me in my area was like $1,500 to $2,200 or something like that. Yeah, I'm not trying to spend that on just a crankshaft. And lo and behold, I found the N52 long block oh, with all the accessories. I disassembled it, got the crankshaft, got it, got it checked, and uh, everything checks out. And so yes, my N55 is getting a N54 crankshaft forged. Now, I have a lot of other videos that are backlogged before, so I'm going to post those before, but don't worry, a second part will come where I install that crankshaft and I rebuild the engine, actually. Anyways, this is the truth I'm saying goodbye. Uh, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.